most foreigners that are yet to visit China, including myself once upon a time, seem to believe that all Chinese people live in apartment blocks. And whilst this is somewhat true, there are alternatives. Miraculously, right here in the heart of Beijing, lies a hive of interconnected alleyways, which is home to some of China's grandest and simplest homes. Bougie bars, teeny tiny hole-in-the-wall restaurants, and most importantly, an awesome community of quirky characters. Oh, and me, of course. Yep, that's right, I live in one of Beijing's many ancient hutongs. If you want to see what my digs are like, then you can check out this video here, because today I'm going to focus on the local area and tell you what makes it so unique. But first things first, I'm hungry, let's go and get some breakfast. In this video, I'm going to talk about my local neighborhood, which is basically a collection of alleyways spread over a couple of blocks. Unlike some of the more touristy parts of Beijing, this is virtually a self-sustaining community and you can find pretty much everything you need here without ever having to leave. And I bet that a lot of the locals rarely do. As is the case in much of China, people start their day with a trip to the local market. People come here in the morning to get their fresh meat and vegetables for the day. But I'm not here for that. I'm going to make a beeline straight for breakfast. The theme of this video is definitely going to be community and right opposite the market is this outdoor gym which kind of doubles as a community hub. People come here to flex their muscles, bring their grandkids, have a stretch and a chat. Being in the gym can get kind of boring but this is a vibe I can get on board with. It's also super busy in the evenings when everyone comes out to use them. But that's enough of the gym, let me show you some of the alleyways. This is one of my favorite streets because, look, it has these incredible willows that are just all the way along the street and they hang down and they just look so beautiful. Probably my favorite thing of all though are these amazing grand doors that you see dotted around the hutongs. usually painted red and have these incredible door knockers on the front. Many have these incredible painted murals and other features that give a hint to the status of the inhabitants inside. If you are lucky enough to sneak a peek, then you'll see an amazing courtyard house known as a Shihuyuan. Each Shihuyuan is comprised of multiple buildings, which are laid out according to the principles of feng shui, and surrounded by a tall wall that hides the secrets of the wealthy people that call this place home. In many ways, these epic palatial compounds don't really fit in with the local hutong life on display outside. So how exactly did they find themselves seemingly plonked in the middle of this working class neighborhood? Well, to understand that, we are going to have to go a long way back, so buckle your seatbelts. In the 13th century, the Mongols conquered Beijing and they began building these streets, which they called hutongs, the Mongolian word for water wells. The top nobles and army generals within the newly established Yuan dynasty began building walled compounds around these wells that were inhabited by a single clan or family. Throughout the various dynasties, different noble families fell in and out of favour, but the hutongs of central Beijing remained the home of the elite, with the poorer parts of society being pushed to the city's limits beyond the protection of the ancient city wall. But then, a century ago, the Qing dynasty fell, and in the turmoil that followed, lots of noble families lost their status. Poorer peasants came into the city looking for work, Many of these grand houses were subdivided into much smaller dwellings 
and a network of alleyways sprung up between the grand avenues. And that's how these hutongs got the cosmopolitan flavor on show today, which I just adore. Another striking feature of these bustling streets is the variety of transport on offer. As is the case in most of China, you'll find hordes of cyclists and moped drivers squeezing past expensive hunks of German metal. But what is my favorite mode of transport? This. I like to call it the Hutongmobile. a variety of shapes and sizes and one thing's for sure their drivers are the most local of locals and they sure know their way around these tiny alleyways remember when tourism was a thing well you would find lots of these outside of tourist sites offering lifts around the city me though i personally prefer walking around the hutongs and it depends on the time of day to what they're like. In the morning, the hutongs are full of life, but around lunchtime, everyone goes in for a nap. Then later on, people grab a chair, plonk it on the street and watch the world go by. This is my favorite time to wander around. When I started wandering around Beijing, I was struck by just how many public bathrooms there were. Then I realized that this is because a lot of hutong houses don't have their own private bathrooms, and so there is an abundance of communal bathrooms. A few years ago, the bathrooms got renovated in my neighborhood, but some are still better than others. They are kept clean by an absolute army of heroic sanitary workers who drive around in small carts keeping the streets looking pristine. Garbage collection is quite informal and you basically just leave your rubbish bags outside the bathroom or at the end of the alley and these legends pick it up and dispose of it accordingly. In my neighborhood, there's a police station, several schools and a health center. It really has a community feel and I feel way more connected with my neighbors than I did back in my apartment block in Nanjing. That being said, the days of the local Hutong communities could be numbered. Over the past 50 years, lots of old neighborhoods have been knocked down and made into malls, modern apartment blocks, and other facilities. I think this is pretty sad, but on the flip side, land in Beijing is worth a lot of money. I know people who have been relocated outside of the city and they become millionaires overnight. Hutongs will probably always exist in some capacity though, and many of the touristic alleys in areas such as Gulo are go-to destinations for tourists and young Beijingers alike. Seems like for Hutong to survive, there needs to be a certain level of commercialization. I've noticed a big change in my neighborhood in the past few years. A really nice coffee bar has popped up, some very fancy cocktail lounges, and even a craft beer bar. Although I still spend most of my cash at my local fruit and veg shop, or maybe at the noodle places dotted around the neighborhood. And for every fancy bar, there are at least 10 uncles sat on the street corner, drinking baijiu and playing cards, which I feel is the true essence of this area. And whilst it may not be the most modern area, it's certainly got the most character. I absolutely love living here. I guess that's why I've lived here for three years now, because it feels like an escape from busy city life. And every time I go out, I see something new. It really is possible to find a home away from home, even in a city of 22 million people. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.